All right, in the next section, we get to what I really like to do. It's called multiplying. I love multiplying. Multiplying makes me happy. It's a lot better than adding and subtracting. I think it's better than adding and subtracting. Adding and subtracting is very prejudiced. You have to have things that look alike. You know, with fractions, you have to have like denominators. You have to have like terms. You have to look the same. Multiplication says, I don't care, man. I love you. <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> Except don't hug me, though, because that gets kind of weird. So when we're talking about multiplying integers, remember how when we had addition, that meant that we were using the word sum, right? And when I had the two pieces of this, what were the two pieces of a sum called? All right, it's a good thing that I remember. These guys are called add-ins. That's what the two pieces of a sum is called. They're called add-ins. If I'm multiplying integers, well, let's look at it this way. I'll use this symbol. Of course, we're talking about multiplication. And the fancy word we use here is the word product. Right? So I'll say A times B. The answer is the product. Okay? The result from adding numbers is what? The sum. It's, it's right here. Right? <laughs> the result from subtraction is the what? Difference. Difference. Now, with a product, the two pieces that make up a product, these guys are called factors. This will not be the only time this semester that we use the word factors. We use it all the time. You, one of the things you need to get out of this class is how you can look at numbers and see the factors, see the pieces that multiply to give you that number. Okay. Now, we oftentimes do not use this symbol for multiplication. We have to move beyond that, and so you may see this. Use a raised dot for multiplication. Okay. You may see parentheses used for multiplication like this, or parentheses right next to each other like that. When two numbers or terms are right next to each other, that indicates multiplication. Okay. So let's talk about how we multiply. Let me give you the rules for this. It's fairly straightforward. Um, here we go. So if you're multiplying two factors, two factors with, with different signs, you will have a negative result. If the two factors, if the two pieces that you're multiplying together have different signs, your answer is what? Negative. Negative. So what I just said here, right? If the two factors, if the two factors have the same sign, then you have a positive result. Now, I think for some of these things, you guys can trust me on this. And we're going to go through this. I'm going to show you why it is the way it is. If I were to consider the following, let's check this out. What's 3 times 5? 15. That's 15. What's 2 times 5? 10. 10, and I can keep going like this. What's 1 times 5? Five? 5, and so on. So 0 times 5 is what? 0. What about negative 1 times 5? That's negative 5. Do you see this pattern that's kind of going on here? As I decrease this first number, and I keep the second factor the same, I decrease this by one every time, and what happens over here? Isn't it decreasing by the same amount, by five every time? 
So if I were to get down here and say negative 2 times 5, what would that answer be? That would be negative 10. Okay. Think about this. So negative 2, you can see this as a loss of 2, right? If you lose 2 five times, what have you done? You've lost 10, right? If you lose two pounds five different times without getting it back, naturally, of course, right? Because you can't keep losing the same two pounds. <laughs> if you lose two pounds five times, you've lost 10 pounds, right? Yes. All right. Well, if you believe me on that, let me change this. If I do three times negative five, what's that answer? That's negative 15. What if I do 2 times negative 5? Negative 10. If you have 3 losses of 5, that's negative, fi negative 15. A loss of 15. 2 losses of negative 5, that's negative 10, right? Again, being Texans fa fans, we know all about this. You have 2 false start penalties that are worth 5 yards <laughs> lost. You just lost 10 yards. Yes. You're horrible, right? You don't know how to be still. I mean, I could understand if it, was, if it were my kids playing football, false start all the time. But these are grown men. <laughs> Don't move. Be still. <laughs> Quiet mouse, still mouse. All right, one times negative five is what? Negative. All right, the easy one. I love multiplying times zero. Zero times negative five is what? Zero. All right. Negative one times negative five. It's positive 5. Do you see the pattern here? I'm decreasing these numbers by 1, just like I did over here on the left. But I'm keeping the second factor the same. As I'm decreasing this by 1, these guys are changing by the same amount. Because think about this. 3 losses of 5 is negative 15. 2 losses of 5 is negative 10. So it's not as big of a loss, right? Here, if you look at the way the book describes this, it's sometimes it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around it. If you lose a loss. Think about, think, think about those words. If you lose something that's a negative, right? But what if you lose the loss? It's like you found it again, right? If you lose the loss, it, that's a gain. Right? You lost five pounds, but then you lost the loss. Lost, no more, right? If you lost the loss, it comes back to you, right? I lost five pounds. If you gain five pounds back, it's like, well, so much for losing the loss. <laughs> or, you could just, or you could just look at the pattern that's going on here and go, oh, okay, negative times the negative is what? <laughs> so positive. You know what you should do? You should all go rent the movie Stand and Deliver with Edward James Olmos and Lou Diamond Phillips. You know, and there's, a, there's that scene a negative times a negative equals a positive. Maybe we should watch that. It's really, it's good stuff. It makes you feel like, it, it makes you feel inspired. Like you can go change the world. Like me, that's what I'm doing. I'm changing the world. Is that going to happen in the real world? What? Negative and negative positive. <laughs> yeah, I just told you. It's all about how you look at things. If you lose five pounds, but then you lose the loss because you gained them back, it's a gain of 10. I, I know, it's kind of crazy. But it's, it's, it's there, and you need to know how to work with this. Trust me. I, I, I'm the teacher. You guys just assume that I'm the teacher. I could have just been any guy who put on a pair of khakis and a button-up shirt and, all right, guys, uh, I think I know what I'm doing. If I do this, if I do um, 7 times negative 5, what should the answer be? Are the signs the same or different? Different, different signs, but I'm multiplying, so I get what? Negative I get a negative answer, so that's a negative 35. Think about this. It's 7 times negative 5. You have 7 losses of five, which would give you what? A total loss of negative 35, right? 
Okay. What if I have negative 8 times negative 9? Okay, 8 times 9 is 72, but is the answer positive or negative? Positive. Why is it positive? Because you have 2 negative. Negative times negative equals a positive. All right, so that's a positive. Do I need to write the positive symbol there? No. Does it make you feel better? No. Well, fine, you can keep it there. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's importante. Now, Let's keep on going. You guys seem to be getting a good handle on this. I've got a lot of room left at the bottom of this page. What's negative 4 times 3? Negative, negative 12. These guys have different signs, so your result is negative. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing you need to worry about. If the signs are different, what's your answer? Negative. negative. If the signs are the same, your answer is what? Positive. Because you already know. You know this. What's a positive times a positive? Yeah, what else has it got to be, right? <laughs> you knew this when you were like seven, right? Like I see the stuff that my kids are doing. They're just, I'm looking at, you're doing math facts. You're multiplying times one. All right, how, you can't mess this up. You're multiplying times, and it's, you don't have any negatives. You don't have any fractions. Enjoy the easy life, right? <laughs> You know what? I think we need to make things more difficult. Oh, no. I don't, I don't care. How about 2 times negative 7 times negative 4? Woo! <laughs> Man, what you got? <laughs> Tell it. Piece by piece, right? Yeah. Positive what? Ooh. Check this out. Negative what is this part right here? If I just do that, what is that? Negative 14. This is a negative 14, right? But I still have to multiply this times a negative 4. And then, well, I've got negative times negative, so that will give me what? A positive something. Are you sure about that? That sounded like you ended in a question mark. Positive 56. Positive 56. We will be positively sure about our answers. So positive 56. Do you all agree? I'm going to show you some really neat things about multiplying in just a moment. So stick around after the break.